hello to all the brothers and sisters of the world. May the Lord bless us. Let me introduce myself. My name is Elsa Maki. I am married and mother of two children. One who is a Bible worker. I exercise talent that Lord has given me as the secretary in my church group located in Tahiti in French Polynesia. As an auditor in the missionary field of French Polynesia. As a leader of the Department Sabbath School in the Pacific Union. The Lord has also given me the talent to teach. I am an elementary school teacher and have been teaching for 31 years. I was contacted by Father Ben Thiel to share a solemn moment with you in prayer. Here is an opportunity for us to bow down to pray to the Lord, my brothers and sisters. Let us pray. Lord, our God, our good and tender Heavenly Father, we pray to you to thank you for all the graces that you grant us at every moment of our life. Thank you, Lord, for this moment that you give us to give you glory for the different talent that you have given to each one of us to make your work progress everywhere in the world. Thank you, Lord, for allowing each one of us to serve you faithfully until the end of our life and to be part of the chosen people who will be raised up on the clouds of heaven. May your will alone be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is in the name and for the love of Jesus that we ask you all these graces, and with the help and support of your Holy Spirit that we ask you all these. Amen. May the Lord bless us, all brothers and sisters, and see you soon. Hello everyone, my name is Nancy Fountain. I live in Northern California. Um, I work at Whispering Pines Christian School, which is our church school. And I've been working there for over 20 years now. And um, today I'm excited to share with you about the importance of the elementary years. Uh, we have all gone through these years ourselves, and without a doubt, we can say that they have been key to the impact of how our lives are now. Whether it was a good experience or maybe not so good experience, we carry what we were given when we were children into our adulthood. Our childhood is gone now, and we were not in control of it. Our parents or our guardians were the ones that controlled what we did and how we spent our time. But what we are in control of now is the childhood of our children, whether it's our own children, whether it's church children, school children, our family's children, even our neighbor's children. We all have some uh, to a greater degree or smaller degree with children. And what is it that we will pass along? Will these children thank us when they are adults? Because they do grow up. They don't stay little forever. Or will they resent us for mistakes that we've made in the past? If it were up to us alone, we would probably fail miserably. But with God's help, He shows us the way. He thinks about each child that is born. He loves each child that is born. And He wants each child to know Him and to love Him. He wants them to be saved from the sinful world. And the most amazing part of this is that he gives us, the adults, the privilege to be part of this work. What an amazing privilege that is, but it's also a great responsibility. In the Bible, we have many examples of how instructions were given and how to bring up children. 
we see the example of Samuel. We also have the example of John the Baptist. We have the best example of all, which is Jesus. And I want to take that example, and I want to elaborate a little bit on that. So we read in Luke chapter 2, verse 52, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and with men. The Bible doesn't tell us much of Jesus' early years, but it tells us everything we need to know of how Jesus grew up. And this is a pattern for us to follow of how we can facilitate the best and the highest education for our own children. He grew in stature. So this refers to the physical aspect of his growing. He was dependent on his mother, his father, for most of this. And so what should we learn from this? We should also give everything we need to our children for proper growth. Things such as cleanliness, which is very important to growing up healthy. It's um, it's very difficult for a child to to learn or to be around an environment that is that is as filthy or that is cluttered. We know that children do not learn well this way. We also should um, teach them or show them how to eat healthy. And you may think this is not important, but I can tell you from experience that when a child comes to school and hasn't eaten properly, we can tell it's a big change. Learning becomes difficult and frustrating. They can't seem to, to concentrate or learn well. So healthy eating and teaching them to be healthy, to love healthy foods is something that is important. But of course, we ourselves have to show by example. Another way um, is another thing that is important is also exercise. It's exercise is very important for a good development. Um, children need to move and they naturally do. They love to move. You put them outside and you see the children run. I mean, you try to keep up with a two-year-old and it's pretty impossible. They're just going all over the place. And so children like to do that. And this is one of the things that we, um, face in our world now is children are, are behind screens for many, many hours. And that, um, that decreases their, their growth and it decreases their mobility. And ultimately, it actually makes them not as happy as children that grow. We have a, a 400 acre property here in the school and it's so fascinating to see the children when they're outside and they're running around. They just feel, they look so free and so happy. And so this is important, especially, like I say, in our world now, because there's so much that takes the attention of just natural running and moving. So this is something, and I know that Jesus also spent his time um, outside in nature and in doing good to others. So that's the next step that I want to talk about is he increased in wisdom. So wisdom, um, I said it doesn't say knowledge, it says wisdom. So I looked up in the dictionary and wisdom means the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. So three things. Wisdom is the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. So not only did he have knowledge, but he had experience and he also had good judgment and he grew in those things day by day. And this is what our pattern is. It's important to give our children knowledge and they should learn to read, they should learn to write, they should learn the arithmetics, but that's not all. There's much more to education, a proper education or a high education than, than knowledge. Um, we need to guide them through the experiences that they will, that they will have. Yes, it's important to give our children knowledge, but that's not all. We need to guide them through the experiences that they will have, whether it's maybe observing an animal, maybe an egg in a nest, and they're observing it. Maybe it's an interaction with somebody. It, they're, they're gaining this, these experiences, and it's very important for us to be there along the way to guide them through them because they form ideas and they come to conclusions with the experiences they encounter. 
And this is how they form their judgments and how later on they will react to any situation that they go through. And for sure, they'll have questions. And this is where it's our opportunity to point them to our creator and show them them in everything that they do that God is there with them and God guides them and leads them. So it's not for us to take away these experiences, not to shelter them so much, to be able to to share God's word and to share Jesus with them. So guiding them through these experiences is very important, and it will help them to form their own judgment and their own ideas. The next way that he increased was, and I really like this because um, it says not only with God, but he also increased with men. He grew spiritually with God. And this is something that maybe we, we really need to think about. We think children don't, it, maybe it, they don't, they can't have an experience, but they can have experiences when they're little with God. And they can uh, learn to pray and talk to him in many ways. And so um, this is something that he increased. He learned through the scriptures. He learned um of his existence, of why he was in this world. He learned, imagine Jesus, the creator, who was there from the beginning, now as a child is learning all the things that happened and why he's there. He learned about his his mission to come to this world and his his love that he had for us to be able to, to die for our sins. Shouldn't we teach our children through scriptures as well? Shouldn't we teach them that they are here or we are here for a purpose as well? We we are created for a higher, nobler existence than what we now live. It's something greater that God has for us. This time here in our in this world is just a time of preparation. And this is something that they should find for themselves and we should guide them through so they will be able to understand why they are here. So he grew socially as well. So um, in favor, it says in favor with men. We are to be of service to our neighbors. And in this way, we can find favor with man. We can say he served their needs and he had compassion on people. He spoke to them and he took care of them and was was there for them with any words, even with the doctors of the law. When he spoke to them, he didn't enter into controversy, but yet he opened the scriptures and asked questions in such a way where they wanted to know more. And they said, who is this boy? Who is this that didn't study in our, in our, um, in our schools? Who is he? They were intrigued by him and they wanted to know more. So he increased in favor with them. It's important for us to be of service. Nobody can dislike you when you've done something good for them. It's very difficult. So for us to be able to serve others, we should be able to teach our children this. And in that way, like I said, we will find favor with men as well. So children are very important. For why is because they are the future, right? We decline and they increase. Sometimes we don't think on children. We get so busy with our lives and with grown up things that we have to do that we forget that they need to be cared for, they need to be nurtured. The disciples had this thought. Imagine the disciples who walked with Jesus thought that Jesus should not be bothered by the children, he had more important things to do. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased, and he said unto them, we read in Mark 10, 14, Let the children come unto me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and he blessed them. What a, what a great privilege to be blessed by Jesus himself. These mothers, these parents, these, even children themselves, they sought the best place to go to. They sought the best person to look for. 
They look for Jesus, and he did not disappoint them. He said, let the little children come to me. He wants each child to go to him. And like I said, it is our privilege to take them to him. So these elementary years, um, from as early as five to about 12 or 13 years, are very important in a child's life. It is where they form, where they grow in so many ways. There's no other time that they grow more than the first, say, 12 years of their life. Aristotle says, give me a child till he's seven, and I will show you the man. It's not, there's something to, said about, to be said about that because they grow so much. They grow in stature. I mean, they shoot up very, very quickly. They grow in wisdom. They grow in knowledge, they grow in experiences, in judgments that they form, in relationships with each other and with, with, with us. They grow in spirituality with God. And so it's very important that we share with them Jesus. They, they will absorb everything that we have to give them. It's very important for us at this time to take them to Jesus. And this should be our primary objective because we can take them to church every week and we can make them follow all the rules and all the regulations that we set before them. But these children one day will be grown. We don't think about that, but they will be grown. And what will be left that we have passed on to them? What legacy will we have to give them, to pass on to them. Because when we don't teach them about Jesus, we're teaching just a religion without Jesus. And that can be traumatic. And as they grow older, they will have problems because this is not the way Jesus wants. Jesus wants us to love him and to know him. The most important thing of all I sincerely hope that we can take our children to Jesus, to know Him, to love Him. Like I said, one day they will grow up and we will be gone. Most likely we will be gone, but they will know where to go to find everything that they need. If they have a relationship with Him and they know God, when they are young, when they are older, they will know where to find everything. The Bible says, and this is the most famous verse in relationship with children, it says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is older, he will not depart from it. So let us train up our children to know him and to know him that was crucified. Amen. The Luzon Field Academy Incorporated. Greetings from 2 John 1, 6. Love means doing what God has commanded us, and He has commanded us to love one another, just as you heard from the beginning. Luzon Field Academy is the only school of Seventh-day Adventist Reform Movement in the Philippines. At present, it offers nursery and kindergarten and grades 1 to 7. We intend to open complete junior and senior high school in this area. Luzon Field Academy was established 12 years ago by Sister Olivine Espiritu Oy, the wife of Brother Rinilito Oy, with their personal money. They are members of the SDERN in the Philippines. The Luzon Field Academy was located in Kabatang, a barrio of Chaong Municipality, in the province of Quezon in the Philippines. The Philippines has three groups of islands. El Ife is located in the big island of Luzon. The main goal of the school is to educate the children of the brethren and the main goal is to win souls for Christ. The COVID-19 pandemic has immensely affected the enrollment of LFA. Eight months into the pandemic, the enrollment dropped to 54 from 86. At present, only 34 pupils are left in our school. Many students transferred to public school because of the government's uh, free education program. To help solve the problem of low enrollment and in order to raise funds for the school for this year, the Luzon Field Academy School Board has decided to look for generous persons to pay for the tuition fees of all the pupils for the incoming school year 2021-2022. The school is locating for sponsors to pay for the tuition fees of the students. The school has nine 
is the ARM teachers who are teaching Christian doctrines and values to students. At present, we need money for the salaries of our teachers, vehicle for use in giving Bible studies, and additional rooms for grades 8, 9, and 10. We are asking the brethren, especially our leaders in the general conference, to help the Luzon Field Academy. Thank you very much. May the Lord God shower you with blessings we need for the last days. God bless us all.